You may have noticed all the troubling launch and landing mishaps affecting private space missions lately, from two explosions of a SpaceX Starship to lunar landers that can't stay upright. We think it's fair to wonder if these efforts still have if these efforts still have the right stuff. So we've asked CBS's Bill Harwood to drop in for some perspective. Bill, thank you for being here. Give us your sense of uh, have you seen this much difficulty in uh, in space flight since you've been covering this issue? You know, it, it's interesting, John. You know, sometimes problems come in clumps. And, you know, I don't know if there's some statistical law at work behind that, but that's the way it seems. Uh, in this case, I think, you know, you really have a few apples and oranges here. You know, mm -hmm. the Starship is the most powerful, largest rocket ever built. You know, it generates 16 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. That's twice the power of a, of a NASA Saturn V moon rocket. And getting the bugs worked out of this vehicle is obviously taking SpaceX a little longer than they'd like. This is the second failure they've had with their Starship upper stage. And, of course, that's got NASA scratching their heads uh, because the Starship is what's, what they plan to use to carry astronauts down to the surface of the moon in the Artemis program in just two years. So SpaceX has a lot of work to do to perfect this rocket uh, in time to keep that schedule going. Is part of this bill the fact that basically everybody's pushing the envelope? Or are any of these failures ones that are, you know, ones that they, they should, shouldn't should happen? I mean, if you're pushing the envelope, you kind of expect some things to sometimes go wrong. Well, they're certainly pushing the envelope on the Starship. Uh, you know, that, this, this flight that, that failed was just their eighth test flight. Uh, you know, getting this thing up and working, they're doing it in stages. Uh, they, they do this very rapidly at SpaceX where they, they'll see a problem, they fix it, and then they go fly it and see if it works better. Um, they're doing that very rapidly, but as you can see, uh, you know, mishaps can happen. Now, the moon lander, the Inter intuitive machine's Athena moon lander, uh, that's one you scratch your head about a little bit because they had a lander last year that was very similar in design that also tipped over when it reached the moon. It landed a little hard, it was moving sideways, and it, and it just went over. In this case, we don't know what happened to the Athena lander uh, this week, uh, but it ended up in the same boat. It landed about 800 feet off target in a crater near the moon's south pole, resting on its side. And, of course, it couldn't recharge its batteries in that state, so it has already died. It did send back a spectacular picture showing the Earth in the background and its two landing legs sticking up. But that's not what they wanted. And, and why they didn't get that one right, you know, that, that's a little, that's, that's more interesting. And finally tonight, Bill, this question, the, the uh, mission to the International Space T uh, Station, um, what, what's the schedule on that? And uh, what can you tell us about that? Well, you know, the new crew, the four people that are going up to the station next week, uh, they arrived at the Kennedy Space Center uh, today. Uh, they're going to go up and replace the Crew 9 astronauts. That's the crew that includes Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams from the Starliner, the ones who have been, quote, stranded, close quote, in space for the past eight and a half months. Now, it's interesting because there's been a little bit of misleading uh, news about that. Their return vehicle is already there. It's been there mm -hmm. since last September. Uh, they just, they just, you know, NASA decided to keep them up and bring them all down together. Bill Harwood straightening out for us. Thanks, Bill. Good to talk to you again.